All right, let's switch now to the subject of the types of dry eye and their basic treatment. So uh, it's amazing how complicated our tears are. What we take for granted when it runs down our cheek is an amazingly sophisticated uh, chemical formula composed of oil, water, and mucus. And all three must be present for our eyes to be comfortable. The oil is the top layer. It represents the, the oil slick on top that smooths out the tears and, per, and forms a, a waterproof barrier. Uh, when you think about oil, it doesn't evaporate. And oil sits on top of the water in our tears, and it only represents 1% of our tear volume. But it's an important 1% because it keeps the water from evaporating. It also smooths it out and provides an optical surface. So about 97% of our tears is water. And, but it's water with a lot of solutes in it, a lot of chemicals that help stabilize, that, that uh, fight bacteria, that do all sorts of helpful things. And then lastly, the, the thing that's closest to the eye is a very fine layer of mucus that allows the water to distribute evenly. And that mucus, we're not going to talk much about today because deficiency of that mucus is fairly rare, but it can be a real big problem. Oil deficiency is the most commonly overlooked thing by doctors when treating dry eye. Uh, and uh, when I have patients who come in and say, geez, I've been diagnosed by, with dry eye by two or three doctors. I take artificial tears. It's often the oil deficiency that's missed that's causing most of the symptoms. It's present in 70% of people who have dry eye. And it occurs, I hope everybody can read the print. Some of it's a little small here. Uh, by deficiency of the mybum, of the oils that are produced in these glands. Now, there's a couple things I want you to notice here. In the upper picture, notice that the mybomian glands, these are the oil-producing glands, they're inside the eyelid. And notice they're not just at the edge of the eyelid. They're deep under the skin uh, in, the, in the hard part of the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid that's applied to the eye. And they're, they're long, skinny ducts, uh, long, skinny glands. This is important for the treatment. Now, the oil that these glands produce normally looks like vegetable oil. It's fairly clear, and it flows smoothly like water. Look at this eyelid below in the picture here. You see these whitish dots. And can you see that there's a little curly cue in the middle of the eyelid there of oil that's coming out like toothpaste? This is what many of your eyelids may look like if you have this condition and you look up close. And so think about it. How is this oil going to flow from these glands if the, if, if it's coming out in this kind of consistency? Well, it won't, of course. And so you may have plenty of oil, but it won't come out. It's a quality of tears problem. It's not a quantity of oil problem. So how do we treat that? Well, there, we'll talk about that. But the number one thing that is a cause of this, uh, this oil deficiency is here. It's bacterial infestation. It's not so much skin diseases, although we talk a lot about rosacea and demodex and uh, seborrhea. Bacterial colonization of the eyelids and the glands is the number one problem. And it's very treatable. But it's not treatable in the ways that, that we often treat it. Now, when you think about this, um, here's, here's the chemical formula that we won't go into details in chemistry, but I want you to understand how severe a problem this is. When bacteria, which uh, and, and the chemicals bacteria produces, mix with this oil, it creates a chemical reaction that produces something that is identical to the main ingredient, 99 and 44 percent, uh, 99 and 44 one hundredths percent of ivory soap. And so what happens is these oils in your eyelids turn into soap, literally soap. And we can see this in the exam room as foam in your tear film. And you can see this is a picture of high magnification of the eye. This is the colored part of the eye down below. And then you'll see this white, foamy stuff. This is not soap added to the eye. This is soap that comes from those oil glands. This is called saponification. And this is important. Now, when you think about that, so here's a disease that creates, a, where your body is creating a chemical when it's mixed with bacteria that is identical to soap. How do our eyes feel about having that in our eye, in our tear film? Not so good, of course. It's, it's painful, it's stinging, and, and this, this soap is mixing with the water in our tears, and it doesn't form a nice oil slick. It doesn't form a good optical surface. It's terribly uncomfortable. So you go to the doctor, and what do most doctors tell you to do to treat this? Well, they say this, this condition with the oil is part of the disease that we call blepharitis. You ever heard of this term, blepharitis? Blepharitis literally just means inflammation of the eyelids. Blepharitis includes a lot of different things, 
But when doctors see this, they say, okay, this is blepharitis and here's how we treat it. We, we tell you to use baby shampoo on a Q-tip and scrub up your eyelids with it. How many of you have heard this from a doctor? I'm not sure it's bad advice, but I don't recommend it at all. Because here you've got a condition that's irritating the heck out of your eyes with a soapy-like imbalance, and now you're adding what to it? Soap. So how much does it help? Not so much. The soap does serve some purpose, though. It actually does reduce the amount of bacteria that's in the tears. It also does reduce the scaly debris that's on your eyelashes. Remember, this is a problem that starts with bacteria, and so soap has some role. But instead of using soap, what I prefer to do, I'll explain to you in just a couple minutes. Uh, but, but it is important to get off the scaly debris that's on your eyelashes, because that's where the bacteria live. That's what they feed upon. Remember that the eyelids, these glands, go through the whole eyelid and they're deep inside. Now what you're seeing here in this picture is an eyelid flipped over. We've taken it and we've turned it upside down and uh, actually the lashes are down below here and you're looking with a light shining from behind it right through the eyelid and so you can see these oil glands coming through the eyelid. Everybody see that? It's deep in the tissue though, isn't it? And that's very important to remember because normally when we treat this with, with drops and things they only treat the surface, they don't get into the gland. Here is the very best technology for treating meibomian or oil gland deficiency. Heat is your number one friend in treating oil deficiency. And, but remember that the heat has to be sustained. It, it should not be too hot. Warm is better than hot and duration matters because the, the heat, you just, pr you just close your eyes and you put them under the stream of the hot water in the shower, it may not do a lot for you. You need to apply the heat and let it sit there and you need to put a little pressure on those glands. And uh, this is the washcloth. And inside of it is the red potato. You can see, a little red potato. And so um, I just wrap it, after I wash the potato in soap and water, I wrap it in this washcloth like this, and I'll get it underneath this, under the faucet to, to get it damp. I wring it out, and then I set it on this in the microwave for about a minute. And after a minute has gone by, I wrap it in another paper towel, just so if it's a little warm, it'll cool down. And this will stay warm for about three minutes and put it on both eyes uh, back and forth. And then when I'm all done, I just put it aside and then I do it in the evening with the same potato. And this will almost last a whole week. And it's, it's wonderful because that stimulates the flow of the oil glands. So. Better than anything we know, it works. It may take three minutes after you've been doing it a while. It may take more than that when you're first starting. If you've really got toothpaste in those glands, it's going to take some more heating to literally melt it. But moisture is, is only for the purpose of conducting the heat. Uh, so, you know, a, a, having a wet washcloth or a damp washcloth around the potato will help to conduct the heat. Those hot packs conduct heat pretty well even without moisture. And so you may be, yeah, those, those masks, you may not need moisture uh, wrapped around it. You, you have to try it and see how it works for you. There's not a scientific approach so much as just you want to follow the general recommendation of having the warmth in contact with your skin and heating up those glands. Uh, you don't need to have a lot of pressure, but intermittently you do want a little bit of pressure. Let me show you a picture uh, of, uh, of what I mean. Here's, a, here's the eyelid. Here's a, here's a cadaver eyelid that's on the right side that's been cut in along lengthwise. And you can see that those glands, the duct of the gland is right in the middle of the eyelid. So the heat has to get there. And uh, on the other picture here, this is someone turning out a lower eyelid and using a Q-tip on the inside and they're thumb on the other side to literally squeeze out those oils. And it looks drastic, but in fact, this works. We do this sometimes in the office uh, you know, to look and see how, what's coming out of those glands, and it's, it's dramatic. Once you get those glands flowing, they will tend to continue flowing. So you need to keep using the warm compresses.